podcast preacher. Welcome back to my podcast, Deep Waters. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strengths Ministry, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effect of working out the will and calling of God in and through our lives. The title of this message is, God Does Not Love Everyone. I am not sure if I am trying to dispel the myth that if you just wait until your last dying day before surrendering to God, that it will all work out. And But the obvious thing in that very statement is that most of us will not know when our last living day will be. Okay, G, beep. <laughs> or maybe I'm tired of hearing from so many believing and hopeful Christians that God loves all people or that we are all God's kids. Now, I will be dealing with the God loves all people, not to embarrass anyone or to shame them in ignorance. I do it because these kinds of errors can lead a person astray. And you know that all you have to do is have your wheels turn just a sixteenth of an inch off center to eventually end up in the ditch. Oh, I know you won't think anything is off until you have to call the tow truck, but let's just agree that no one person has all this Bible stuff figured out. And so it is a good idea to be a great listener. Listen, if you can turn pages, you have nothing to fear by listening to someone else regarding the Bible. Because as I try to bring up from time to time, you should check everything that people say and be sure that it is the truth. And compare it with the word of God. If someone says God is green, ask where it states that in the Bible. Go home and start flipping pages if you have to. If they say that he stated that about himself in a vision or a dream, look for his green offspring. And yes, they should be on earth, not on Mars. (laughs) I know, I just got silly there. But all I'm saying is that you will be responsible for your Bible and God knowledge. And it is useful to have others to help. But you should know the Bible well enough to check on what's being shared with you. Now, regarding statements and or beliefs like, we are all God's kids, and therefore he loves all of us. Let's see what the Bible says, just so that we are clear on the issue. John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. I think that that scripture is pretty clear and dispels the myth. But however, we should be able to support such a claim with more scriptures as it is a big deal to consider that not all people are God's kids. 1 John 3.12 Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil, and his brother's righteous. More? Okay, one more. John 8.42.47 Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself. But he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil. Beep. Wait, let me repeat that. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell you the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. I know it's pretty clear, right? Okay, so now that I got that out of my chest, and please know that I'm not saying that God hates everyone going to hell. No one can say or support that scripturally. Hating people and the sinful behaviors of people is two different things. But, and, still doesn't determine God's hate or love for them based on either. Oh wait, I am hearing a just one more example chant. Genesis 6, 1, 5. Now it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. There were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Okay, so I know that I'm just getting stupid, but as obvious as it looks, once it is pointed out to others, they will argue the scripture with other scriptures. Sounds like anyone we know. 
and say that God created everything so that all people are truly his. Ah, yes, but no, he created evil, but he himself was not evil, Isaiah 45, 7. He has taken out people and so has his angels, but they are not murderers. Read the following scriptures for a representative sample. Genesis 38, 6 through 10, Deuteronomy 32, 39, 43, Joshua 10, 11, 1 Samuel 1, 38, 2 Samuel 5, 23 through 24, 2 Kings 19, 35, and 1 Chronicles 21, 1 through 30. Now back to the deathbed salvationers. I know that there are those who will jump on the some who are first will be last and some who are last will be first scripture. Matthew 19.30, but many who are first will be last, and the last first. But I'm not sure this is strictly talking about the last-minute salvation waiters of the world, you know, the deathbed salvationers. But even if it is, how will you know if you are living your last day? I mean, accidents happen, and no one that I know commits their life to the Lord upon impact with another vehicle, just for one example, or when caught in a gunfight at a family event. (laughs) And no, we didn't have gunfights at our family events. Well, that may have been because we left the guns at home. (laughs) But I'm telling you, we all have a past, right? Anyway, my thought is that you should know God from more than just the love angle, meaning that you actually believe because the Bible states that he is love. 1 John 4, 8 and 16, that he loves everything that he ever did create, including all humans. I know some of you just thought, no, no. But he doesn't love the devil or fallen angels, or, or, and, or. And I would say that it might be true, but we are going to look at this from a different, less obvious angle. There is another side to him. I think he does have a last nerve, and his kids may irritate it the most. First the Jews, and then no doubt, the Gentiles. The title of this repeat message was, God is Love, But Not So Fast. The message white paper was titled, God is Love, But He Doesn't Love Everybody. I would have used it, but didn't want to scare anyone off who may have thought differently. Well, as you can see with this revised edition, I am now no longer afraid to scare off any of my listeners, because I know you don't just take what I say as the gospel truth, but you compare it to what the Bible says and move forward from there. And yes, there are whole church denominations and religious organizations that don't know the contents of what I'm about to share. I know because I've had them visit me at my house to sell me their different than the true Bible gospel. Side tip, if you ever hear someone tell you that God was first alive and then died and then became God, well, ask them to leave until they deal with their ignorance of Jesus and the process of salvation. As we all know, God states in Genesis 2, 16, 17, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. We know that God himself did not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because he didn't have to. (laughs) Now, why would he pronounce death on himself? You see, if you sin, you die and are separated from God. If God died, then he sinned. And if he sinned, then there is no salvation for anyone, including the befuddled ones. Looksy daisy, 1 Peter 2, 21, 23. For to this you were called, because Christ who also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth, who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. You see, Jesus died a non-sinner and then rose again three days later, Matthew twenty-seven sixty-three. This is an achievement no one else has accomplished or experienced. No one can step forward and dispute this truth. God has always been, is, and will be. Revelations 1.18 and 1 Chronicles 16.36. You see, God has always been. You cannot create time and time. You must be outside of time to do so. Okay, so I did it again and swayed to another message. Let's side tip the other way. Get back to God does not love everyone. So how could God, who is the essence of love, perfect love in action, word and deed, and yet he has another side, and although he remains the epitome of love, that side of him looks expectantly different. What this message is intended to do is correct the thinking, especially of those Christians who only preach on God's love, but have no response to the sinners of the world, that everything opposite of God was created by some other imaginary thing. I asked a religious gentleman if God hated anyone, as he has stated to me that God is love and loves everyone. 
I was looking for a door in order to enter into a truthful discussion, and he opened it up for me with that comment. He said, God loves everyone. I asked him if he knew of an Esau in the Bible, to which he stated he had not. This is not unusual for the attendees of this religious brand, as they interpret the Bible and are unable to get the revelation of it, as they believe that the Holy Ghost is separate from the Father. I know if my spirit was separate from me, I would not be alive. And But because I am made in his image and likeness, my spirit is attached to me as his is to him. Genesis 1, 26, 27. Anyway, I said God hates Esau. And then I told him that he needed to look it up. Romans 9, 13. As it is written, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. God did it all, created it all, including the darkness, evil, and the devil. And he alone has the power to both kill and make alive. Nothing in the human arsenal of health, anything, including the world of pharmacy, has the power to kill and make alive. Deuteronomy 32, 39. Now see that I, even I, am he, and there is no God besides me. I kill and make alive. I wound and I heal. Nor is there anyone who can deliver from my hand. 1 Samuel 2, 6. The Lord kills and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and brings up. 2 Kings 5, 7. And it happened when the king of Israel read the letter that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. Okay, so we see in that series of scriptures that we are dealing with a serious God, right? Isaiah 43, 13. Indeed, before the day was, I am he, and there is no one who can deliver out of my hand. I work, and who will reverse it? He is really the only most accurate definition of a God. He is the only God. No one else created these things. Isaiah 48, 12, 13. Listen to me, O Jacob, and Israel, my call. I am he, I am the first, I am also the last. Indeed, my hand has laid the foundations of the earth, and my right hand has stretched out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand up together. Yes, he even created sin, death, evil, Isaiah 45, 7, hatred, gossip, the devil, fallen angels, the giants who walked the earth before the flood, Genesis 6, 1 through 4. Yes, he is a creator of all things. Everything consists and exists in him. Let's listen for just a minute to make that a sure thing. We or they need to know that there is another sign to the God who is called love. John 1, 3, all things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. John 13, 3, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God. Acts seven fifty. has my hand not made all these things? Romans eleven thirty six. for of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. Yet for us there is one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we for him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we live. Colossians 1, 16, 17. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Buddha, Muhammad, Apollo, Athena, Artemis, Ares, Zeus, Hera, Poseidon, Demeter, Hestia, Krishna, Rama, Baal, Deborah, Kali. But enough of these powerless, human-created, fake, and powerless gods, none of which created anything or did anything supernaturally for the good of humanity. Psalms 115.3.8 But our God is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak. Eyes they have, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. Noses they have, but they do not smell. They have hands, but they do not handle. Feet they have, but they do not walk. Nor do they mutter through their throat. Those who make them are like them. So is everyone who trusts in them. Let's keep going just in case it's not clear. Isaiah 44, 620. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. And who can proclaim as I do? Then let him declare it and set it in order for me. Since I appointed the ancient people and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show these to them. 
Do not fear nor be afraid. Have I not told you from that time and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? Indeed, there is no other rock. I know not one. Those who make an image, all of them are useless, and their precious things shall not profit. They are their own witnesses. They neither see nor know that they may be ashamed. Who would form a God or mold an image that profits him nothing? Surely all his companions would be ashamed, and the workmen, they are mere men. Let them all be gathered together. Let them stand up. Yet they shall fear. They shall be ashamed together. The blacksmith with the tongs works one in the coals, fashions it with hammers, and works it with the strength of his arms. Even so, he is hungry, and his strength fails. He drinks no water and is faint. The craftsman stretches out his roll. He marks one out with chalk. He fashions it with a plane. He marks it out with the compass and makes it like the figure of a man according to the beauty of a man, that it may remain in the house. He cuts down cedars for himself and takes a cypress and the oak. He secures it for himself among the trees of the forest. He plants a pine and then the rain nourishes it. Then it shall be for a man to burn, for he will take some of it and warm himself. Yes, he kindles it and bakes bread. Indeed, he makes a god and worships it. He makes it a carved image and falls down to it. He burns half of it in the fire. With this half he eats meat. He roasts a roast and is satisfied. He even warms himself and says, Ah, I am warm. I have seen the fire. And the rest of it he makes into a god, his carved image. He falls down before it and worships it, prays to it and says, Deliver me, for you are my god. They do not know or understand, for he has shut their eyes so that they cannot see, and their hearts so that they cannot understand. And no one considers in his heart, nor is there knowledge or understanding to say, I have burned half of it in a fire. Yes, I have also baked bread on its coals. I have roasted meat and eaten it. And shall I make the rest of it an abomination? Shall I fall down before a block of wood? He feeds on ashes. A deceived heart has turned him aside, and he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, is there not a lie in my right hand? <laughs> One more on this and then we move on. Isaiah forty eighteen twenty three. To whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness will you compare to him? The workman molds an image. The goldsmith overspreads it with gold, and the silversmith casts silver chains. Whoever is too impoverished for such a contribution chooses a tree that will not rot. He seeks for himself a skillful workman to prepare a carved image that will not totter. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. He brings the princes to nothing. He makes the judges of the earth useless. Now again, for those of you that didn't know just how bad it is to have that little fat man sitting in your garden or flower bed, you can now take a minute to destroy it and dispose of its remains. Yep, all of that last section was just for you, so that you would understand that he, that is the God called love, is a jealous God. And he doesn't share his bride with anyone. Exodus thirty four fourteen. So now, yes, the devil has dark power and he uses it. But trust me when I say that it is a far lesser of a power than God's. And it cannot create anything, nor can it have power over you if you are in right standing with God and actively doing his will. Can and will God use the devil to test you? Yes, he has done so in scripture. Luke twenty two thirty one. Sin also opens the door. Can a person do supernatural things using the power of the devil? Didn't Saul use a witch to call up Samuel, who was resting sleepily on his my pillow? 1 Samuel seven seventeen. Yep, in fact, we can also use him. But you'd better know that it's the will of God to do so in any specific event. 1 Corinthians 5, 4, 5, and 1 Timothy one twenty. That dark power can be used in and through and otherwise fakely God or other human who sits open to it. But know this, that any power that fakely God or human manifests comes from the devil. Perhaps this is why we are taught to test every spirit. 1 John 4, 1 and Matthew 24, 5. Throughout Isaiah, as well as in other books in the Bible, God clearly tells us that he is the only God and that there is no other. You can then see how industrious we humans are when we reject the idea of God because of immature Christians or false pretenses. We just make a God that suits our needs, even if it does absolutely nothing for us. 
It can offer up nothing in return for our dedication and commitment to it. Humans are not the brightest bulbs in the context of all that God created. Does anything in nature think of such things outside of humanity? I know I am tough on this stuff, but no, without a doubt, I am not excluded from needing to know this stuff about myself as well. Not the brightest bulb. I rejected God for more than 30 years, thinking that the whole world would be saved by the God called love because he would simply rewrite the rules for me. No worries, though, because there has been a low wattage problem since the history of uses. What say you? Knuckle up. It's one thing to go into a fight with some semblance of winning, but altogether another to think that you have a shot against this one God who is thoroughly explained in the Bible. There is no equal. Nothing measures up to his throne, except Jesus, who thought it worth it to bring some back to the Father. If it were possible to commit every evil act and reap all of its rewards for an entire lifetime, it would never come close to comparing to heaven, even if for just five minutes. Mark eight thirty six. He is not a bully, but know that he will not change for you or any of your ignorant arguments against him or his kids. There is a price to pay for your behavior. Buckle up and be prepared to pay it, or get on board as a true child would never pass up a train ride. Isaiah forty three ten thirteen. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. I have declared and saved, I have proclaimed, and there was no foreign God among you. Therefore you are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. Indeed, before the day was, I am he, and there is no one who can deliver out of my hand. I work, and who will reverse it? So does this make you want to go UFC on him? He is telling you that there is no other option, and oh, by the way, I am love. The proof may be in the fact that he created us in spite of how we have treated, continue to treat, and no doubt will continue to treat him. 1 Samuel 2, 6, 8. The Lord kills and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and brings up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and lifts up. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the ash heap to set them among princesses and make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. I like this one for those who think that they have gotten everything by the works of their own hands. It is also a good perspective on tithes and offering. And the homeless, well, there you have it. We saw this once, let's see it again. Do we have a role in any of this with the one and only God? Yes, this is what makes being a Christian so delightful. Isaiah 45, 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. Does having the strongest military in the world keep peace? Only until others tire of it. But now if we obey God and do all that he asks of us, won't we remain blessed? If we don't, no military in the world can withstand the judgment of God. Amos 3.6 If a trumpet is blown in a city, will not the people be afraid? If there is calamity in a city, will not the Lord have done it? By the way, this is why there should be no hatred towards another nation or people of another nation or culture. Calamity has another source outside of humanity. Isaiah 37.36 Then the angel of the Lord went out and killed in the camp of the Assyrians 185,000. And when people arose early in the morning, there were the corpses, all dead. We are going to need more nukes. (laughs) Nope. All is lost for a wayward country that doesn't understand we have a God who loves and hates. He hates sins, offers up a solution. But if we challenge his position, you better look for wings. Isaiah 54, 16. Behold, I have created the blacksmith who blows the coals in the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the spoiler to destroy. This is not all people. We get to decide. I have often been concerned with a child who is given too much responsibility when they are not ready for it. There is no downside to siding with God, and yet we find the worst reasons to go head to head with him. Job 2.10 But he said to her, You speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God? And shall we not accept adversity? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. See, Job proves that what I'm saying here is correct. God has a right path to take, regardless if the devil is turned loose on you and yours. Lamentations 3.38 Is it not from the mouth of the Most High that woe and well-being proceed? Malachi 1, 2 through 3 I have loved you, says the Lord. 
Yet you say, in what way have you loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, says the Lord? Yet Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated, and lay waste his mountains and his heritage for the jackals of the wilderness. Cain had no favor either, will you? Think you can survive the opinions and commands of God? The hatred of God? The love of God? Genesis 38, 7 through 10. But Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord killed him. And Judah said to Onan, Go into your brother's wife and marry her, and raise up an heir to your brother. But Onan knew that the heir would not be his, and it came to pass when he went into his brother's wife that he admitted on the ground, lest he should give her an heir to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord. Therefore he killed him also. Secrets? Doing nasty things in the dark? Hiding your filthy sins from the world? Think no one is watching? Ecclesiastes seven thirteen fourteen. Consider the work of God. For who can make straight what he has made crooked? In the day of prosperity, be joyful. But in the day of adversity, consider. Surely God has appointed one as well as the other, so that man can find nothing out that will come after him. This is why heaven will be awesome. No more worries, warts, and wars. 1 Samuel two twenty five and 33. If one man sins against another, God will judge him. But if a man sins against the Lord, who will intercede for him? Nevertheless, they did not heed the voice of their father, because the Lord desired to kill them. Verse 33. But any of your men whom I do not cut off from my altar shall consume your eyes and grieve your heart. And all the descendants of your house shall die in the flower of their age. Wow, this is so intense, since God never changes. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, before we walk away with a full mind and heart, let's strengthen the position that God has, that other side. And but before I do, I want to share how this remix came about. I was watching a short video found in YouTube and came across this guy who was being very straight in his preaching against the sin of being gay. There was this Christian lady who walked up to him and stated something to the effect that he should stop because the crowd was getting upset and she was sure that Jesus wouldn't do such a thing. Luke 4, 1630. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, You will surely say this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard done at Capernaum, do also here in your country. Then he said, Assuredly, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you, truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months. And there was a great famine throughout all the land. But to none of them was Elijah sent except Zarephath in the region of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elijah the prophet, and none of them was cleansed except Nahan the Syrian. So all those in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city. And they led him over to the brow of the hill on which their city was built that they might throw him down over the cliff. Then, passing through the midst of them, he went his way. This wasn't Jesus even preaching to them about their sin yet. This was him just telling them who he was and showing them in the word, via the scroll, how he was the word and prophetic manifestation of that very word. All their life they were waiting for him. And when he shows up, they wanted to kill him. Mark eleven seventeen eighteen. 18. Then he taught, saying to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of thieves. And the scribes and chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him. For they feared him, because all the people were astonished at his teaching. Wow, it's one thing to say, I'm going to kill you. But altogether another thing to say, I'm going to destroy you. (laughs) 
Again, he didn't even address any specific sin, only that they had lost sight of the purpose of the temple. Okay, one last one, and then we move on. John 8, 29, 59. And he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do the things that please him. As he spoke these words, many believed in him. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Most assuredly I say to you, Whoever commits sin is a slave of sin, and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the Son, that is Jesus, makes you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me, because my word has no place in you. I speak what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have seen with your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, We were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I have proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself. But he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my words. You are of your father, the devil. And the desires of your father, you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell you the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Then the Jews answered and said to him, Do we not rightly say that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. And I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks and judges. Most assuredly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. Then the Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And you say, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who is dead? And the prophets are dead. Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father who honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if I say, I do not know him, I shall be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, You are not yet 50 years old. You have seen Abraham? (laughs) Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. So in these public meetings, Jesus was preaching and teaching just as the Father had assigned him to do. Same, same with us, by the way. And in him doing so, Some in the crowds believed him, and some wanted to throw him off a cliff. Some wanted to destroy him. What a gross thing to even want to do, right? Destroy a human life. And what's worse, they wanted and eventually did just that. And well, some wanted to kill him by throwing rocks at him. And I know Jesus was telling them that he, in fact, was God. But in today's world, if someone said that, they would get laughed at. And not so much thrown off a cliff. So I guess in that story, it's important to know that you can be hated by the devil and get into heaven, but you can't be hated by God and get into heaven. All right, let's continue. So now we go back to this park setting where this guy is quoted as upsetting the crowd with this sin message. And he asks this girl if she believes in Jesus. She states yes. Then he asks if she believed if you died in your sins that you would go to hell. And she stated yes. Then he asked if she cared if people went to hell. To which she also stated yes, but now it's through her tears. And then he asked why it didn't appear as though she cared about these people who were on their way to hell. She had changed her tune once she saw as this man saw. And what I mean is that she had approached the scene as if God loved everyone. 
and that this man was reflecting a version of God that did not exist. Oh, if we would just get this. Jesus said, if they hate me, they'll hate you. More disputes in the church come from ignorance of the word and just simply people not being equipped for the work of ministry. Her self-righteousness and or fear of the crowd placed her in an embarrassing situation. Look at Timothy's response. 1 Timothy 5, 19, 20. Do not receive an accusation against an elder except from two or three witnesses. Those who are sinning rebuke in the presence of all, that the rest also may fear. This man was preaching the Jesus gospel that she was unaware of. Hopefully we at this point understand that the crowds, no matter what sins they might be wrapped up in, will not all appreciate the fact that you are trying to present an opportunity, the only one that exists, by the way, for them not to go to hell. So do we have any other evidence that God has two sides and that his love is not equally distributed? Psalms 11.5, the Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the ones who love violence, his soul hates. Now, I only use the scripture where it was clear that he hated. I did include some where he simply destroyed people, which of course could be interpreted as if he had hated those in whom he had destroyed. But I did not do any research necessary to prove that out. So I'm just sticking to the hate people defense. Psalm 5, five: the boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of inequity. Okay, so I decommed inequity so that we have an understanding of what it is, so that we did not have to guess who they were. You know, those workers of inequity. Inequity, gross injustice or wickedness, evil doing, canavery, depravity, infamy, a violation of right or duty. Wicked act. Sin. Okay, wait a minute. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So is this saying that God hated everyone who has sinned? Psalms 5.5 5 does not say that he hates sin itself. I typed the line, I hate sin. And nothing related to this pulled up. Now, but we know God hates sin. But according to this, this is all who have done so. That means everybody who was born on this planet, with the exception of Jesus, was hated by God. Those who were or are or will be authentically born again will not be living under God's hate anymore. Oh, how blessed we are to have been called out of his hatred and into his love. And that is, in fact, what has happened here. God, through the blood of his son Jesus, now sees us from his love side and not from his hate side. And so that we are not thrown off by those scriptures that specifically name the things or people that God hates, i.e. Esau, and the wicked and the ones who love violence, we are all, who have sinned, hated by God. That is why the message of the gospel is so important. One minute God can hate you and the next he can love you. No, not like a girlfriend who is indecisive or a boyfriend who is the same. No, and I don't agree that you should have a girl or a boyfriend. Only that you should ask God for a good godly wife or husband and be available to see and hear when that person shows up. Dating is a man-made up crisis waiting to happen. Okay, so we solved the God-love-hate relationship, right? Yes, we did. He has those in whom he loves and those in whom he clearly does not. And in finishing nearly so, I want to deal with something that has caused many to think differently that the scripture shows. Romans 8, 35, 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Verse 37. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul is talking about Christians here. Now, but this doesn't mean that as a Christian, you cannot just walk away from God. I have done messages on people walking away, and that, no doubt, is a horrible thing to do. You can give an ear to my recent message titled, What Causes Apostasy? And who is at risk for a more in-depth study on that subject? So yes, we ourselves can separate ourselves from his love. Not that his love would change for us. Well, unless we become like the old self once again. Psalm 5.5 5, The boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of inequity. 
Can we draw back? Hebrews 10, 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Hey, look, repent. It's not magic because the Lord works with you to help you. It is not a good time to mistake his silence, by the way, he is not, for approval. He tells us in advance of what he approves of and what he does not. In advance, what country would give you advanced knowledge of their intention of war if you do not comply? Second Chronicles 18, 18, 22. Then Micaiah said, Therefore hear the words of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the hosts of heaven standing on his right hand and his left hand. And the Lord said, Who will persuade Ahab, king of the Israel, to go up, that he may fall at Ramoth Gilead? So one spoke in this manner, and another spoke in that manner. Then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. The Lord said to him, In what way? So he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. And the Lord said, You shall persuade him, and also prevail. Go out and do so. Therefore, look, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these prophets of yours, and the Lord has declared disaster against you. This story always intrigues me. What chance do you have of doing whatever you want in a world spinning out of control? He is in control. He is a God of love and hate. In fact, he really did create the fruit of the tree of life and the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I think good does not exist without contrasting it with evil. But however, and it is so, both or rather all fruits from this tree are no good. That is from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Anyway, I believe that if we really want to go deep with him in order to get to know him, we should see as much of who he is as we can, both sides of his love. I believe this creates a healthy fear of God. He is the epitome of a 360 vision. He is completeness. No amount of human inventiveness will reduce who he is, ever. And that girl in the park correcting the servant of God who knows his God? No doubt she learned that what seems like a plea of kindness and love of acceptance to let those in sin off the hook by ignoring the fact that their sin is what separates them from him, and that if they die separated, they go to hell was acting out of her ignorance of God. And I have said this before many times. Her ignorance is the fault of today's church, as we are not equipping the saints for the work of ministry. Ephesians 4, 11, 16. Nor are we making them disciples. Matthew 28, 19. And true, the worst part is that it is a fixable problem that most today do not want to fix. And But then can it be said that we are not loving ourselves or our enemies enough when we ignore these commands? let alone God, as his son did all the heavy lifting in the salvation plan. Well, that's it for today. Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with regarding these messages, but what you can take away from it. Together, we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we work alone. Let's flip the script and kill, steal, and destroy the works of the enemy and create space for the light of life to shine through into people's lives. Plant a seed and click on the like and subscribe buttons. Let's build this ministry together. Thanks and see you next time in Deep Waters. Thank you.